U.S. stocks had a second straight day of upside activity as the S&P 500 was up 0.8%. Small caps did even better, up over 1%. As we did hear some rumors that uh, perhaps the stimulus talks were back on again today. Uh, we also, of course, uh, had a little bit of reaction there from the vice presidential debate last night. So we'll take a look at all that, see what it means for our posture. Then we'll get into our trade application example where I wanted to focus on a consumer staples company that's showing up as a nice bounce candidate off of its rising 30-day moving average. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to the Market Outlook video presented by MarketScholars.com. I'm your host, Brandon Van Zee. It's October 8th, 2020. First of all, if you're new, remember to go over to our YouTube channel, click subscribe. While you're there, check out our description area where you can sign up for our email distribution list. Additionally, we're heavy users of Twitter. My handle is at Brandon Van Zee, and I would encourage you to follow me there if you're not doing so already. Also, we do appreciate those of you that click like and retweet anytime uh, these Market Outlook videos get posted there. Lastly, we have a presence on Facebook as well. Feel free to join our group at the web address you see embedded in the logo in front of you. All right, let's go ahead and jump into our charts here today. And as you can see, I've got chart 4B pulled up here in front of us. If you're a premium member of Market Scholars, you have access to all 50 charts that David and I use. Uh, and this one gives us a general idea uh, what's happening with the four major market indices here in the United States. And the way that you read the background colors of these charts is if the background color is green, that's of course bullish. If the background color is red, that's bearish. Uh, and it's based upon the uh, green line on the market forecast technical indicator, also referred to as the intermediate term line. And so when we see those lines rising, like we do in all of our cases here currently, that starts plotting a green background color. That's assuming that the number is not below 20, uh, which is not the case right now. But if there is ever a time, like a few weeks back, where that green line was in the lower reversal zone, even if it was rising there, we wouldn't necessarily consider that bullish. But right now, when we're kind of in this neutral area between the upper reversal zone and the lower reversal zone, and that green line is rising, that basically means that the intermediate term posture is bullish according to the market forecast. Now, you'll notice that the, the shadings of the green can be a little bit different, and we have some examples of that right now. Notice that the shading of the green on the S&P 500 in our upper left here is light green, whereas over here the Dow Jones you'll see is dark green. And the difference there is whether the green line has risen above the chart's 50th percentile or not. So you'll notice here like the intermediate line in the label says it's at 57 and rising, whereas over here on the S&P 500 it's at 49 and rising. So in all likelihood, Tomorrow, if the stock market rises, uh, the S&P 500 is very likely to go to a strongly bullish posture as soon as tomorrow. In fact, the NASDAQ is likely going to do it as well. They're at 48 and rising right now. So um, good things, all, all things considered. Com compared to where we were at a couple of days ago, where that one tweet just sunk the market uh, for the final hour of trading, um, you know, this has quickly been... Uh, reverted right back to where we were. And uh, folks that would have been kind of scared out of the market based upon that tweet, they're probably regretting it uh, right now, which is uh, why we try to uh, base our decisions a little bit more on uh, the charts. And they're not always going to be right either. But in that particular case, we would have been okay because the posture stayed uh, bullish that entire time, despite that really ugly candle that we had there um, where we closed below the moving average. So um, good sign there. You will see here that uh, down below that Russell 2000 was up over 1% today. They were the leaders today. Um, you know, that they've actually been coming on pretty strong. I've been tweeting about that the last few days. For those of you that follow me there, you'll, you'll probably follow that story a little bit more. Um, the other thing that I would point out is that we're starting to see some really good strength out of the small size factor. Many of you know I teach a factor-based swing trading class, and small size stocks are one of those factors that we track there. Let me pop on over here to the internet uh, briefly and show you that in our some of our most recent um, analysis that the small size factor has actually started to um, pop towards the top in the um, nearer term one month time period. So this is kind of stack ranked right here from a performance perspective. And this is as of Tuesday's close. So um, there's, you know, it's not going to include the last couple of days, but still gives us a good idea as to what has been happening uh, with low size. And you can see here the yellow colors 
are up here near the tops of the ranks. You also see the green up there, but that's not a surprise. Green has been leading us all summer long. That's your momentum category. And of course, we've talked about it countless times in these market outlook videos and uh, on top of the weekly class that I teach for our premium members on, on Wednesdays. But um, that's not the surprise. Momentum we, we've known has been carrying this market for a long time. The surprise is, is, is low size stocks. That is not something that has been really picking up a lot of press out there, at least from, from my perspective. So we wanna keep our eye on that because that's kind of a sleepy area of the market that um, really a lot of people have forgotten about, but all of a sudden we're starting to see some, some legitimate signs of life there. So anyway, I wanted to point that out since it was a little bit of a change of pace and, uh, with, with, with what we had been seeing for much of uh, the last several months. Also, while we're over here on the internet, I uh, always like to say thank you to those of you that help support us uh, on Twitter. You can see that 127 of you clicked like for me on my Tuesday presentation. And as I always say, if you're if you if you prefer me to do the full length kind of 30 minute video, um, then click like on Twitter. And as long as we're up and over 100, I'll, I'll do that. On the other hand, for those of you that appreciate the uh, abbreviated version where there's only 15 minutes worth of analysis because I know some of you have busy schedules so if you prefer the shorter version of this video then don't click like on Twitter and if the amount of likes is less than 100 then the next time I do the video in this case next Tuesday uh, I would keep it to an abbreviated 15 minute version so uh, those of you that prefer the longer version you, you your your voice was heard this time around as we were up and over a hundred likes easily at 127 remember you can like it directly from our website here. If you're watching it on our website, just click this little Twitter widget down below with the heart. Uh, otherwise, you can always find it pinned to the top of my timeline over on Twitter as well. They give you the opportunity to pin one tweet there. So that's another place that you can click like if you so desire. And I, I really appreciate those of you that uh, help support us. Remember, Dave and I don't get paid to do these videos, so we have to figure out the motivation behind spending the uh, hours of uh, effort into researching uh, our trade setups and conducting our analysis, uh, recording the videos, posting the videos, sending the notifications, and all that kind of stuff takes a big chunk out of our time. So uh, we don't get paid to do it. Uh, we, we enjoy doing it. Uh, but uh, the way that we kind of justify it in our heads right now as far as why we do this every day is so that way we can uh, kind of promote our premium business of market scholars. And uh, the only way that gets promoted is if you guys help promote it for us. Uh, and so it's kind of one of those situations where you, you can scratch our back and we can scratch yours in return. So if you got five seconds to spare today, highly encourage you to click like for us there on Twitter. All right, let's get back on track with uh, the thinkorswim charts here. And uh, let's take a look at the three green arrows chart now. This will be chart 4D. And as we're uh, looking at this particular chart, you can see that things have changed a little bit since Tuesday. Uh, on Tuesday, the only uh, chart that had three green arrows was the small caps, uh, the, the area that I had just mentioned a moment ago that's starting to see some really robust price activity. The, the smaller companies out there are starting to shine. And in fact, I talked about that on Tuesday, how the Russell 2000 was looking really good earlier in the day. We were crossing up and over all this prior resistance area, but then at the end of the day, we got that tweet and we basically let go of all of those gains. The good news is the subsequent two days since then, Wednesday and now today, Thursday, we have rallied strongly and closed near the highs of the session on both of those days for the Russell 2000. And you can see here, we've got this new high label plotted on the chart. So remember, this is not an all time high for the Russell 2000. They've kind of been lagging from a longer term perspective over the years. But, you know, if there's going to be a big move somewhere, it's got to start you know, at some point, right? You, you, so if, if we're at eventually going to say we're hitting all-time highs on the Russell 2000, it's got to start from somewhere. Maybe this is the start. Uh, that's a, a very strong sign seeing this price behavior uh, going up and closing near the highs of the days like it has been more often than not here recently. So we continue to have three green arrows on the Russell 2000, which was already the case on Tuesday. The new information since Tuesday is now all the other three charts have joined the Russell 2000. So uh, you'll notice that yesterday we got the green arrow back 
on the moving average for the S&P 500. Same thing can be said over here for the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and the same thing can be said here for uh, the NASDAQ Composite. So all three of them were effectively just waiting for one out of their three green arrows, and that was the moving average itself. Now that price is back above it, three green arrows is back on the board uh, for these. But again, need to stress that right now it is the, the small caps that are showing a little bit more burst of activity. Notice they're the only one with the high label right here on today's candle. For the Dow Jones, the high label was back here on September 3rd. For the S&P 500, they topped out on September 2nd. And the same thing can be said there for the NASDAQ Composite, uh, also September 2nd. So right now, it's October, and Russell 2000 is the only one that can claim a multi-month high here today. You'll notice that uh, the Russell 2000 and the Dow Jones Industrial Average each have uh, green tips on their moving averages. Remember, these are 30-day moving averages. And when they're green on this particular chart setup for B, or actually for D, sorry, uh, that means that price is above a rising moving average. So uh, these moving averages over here on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ are yellow because price is above them, but the moving average itself is falling right now. So there's a little bit more work to do to kind of turn that trend around. And remember, the moving average is a lagging indicator and so it does require um, you know, a few days of, of stronger price activity in order to bend that moving average in one direction or another. We're already doing that with the Dow Jones and the Russell 2000, but we're, we're, we need some more uh, bullish behavior out of the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ before that takes place. All right, moving now to our 1040 crossover. So when we're looking at this here, uh, a reminder that these are three-year charts, so this is chart 4C for those of you that are premium members following along at home. These are um, three-year charts. Each one of the candles is one week in length. And what we're looking at here with the orange lines are the 10-week moving average. The blue lines are the 40-week moving average. And we're just simply looking for crossovers of the moving averages themselves. Sometimes you guys if you've listened to CNBC or Bloomberg or Fox News or what have you, you might have heard of the term death cross uh, or golden cross. And that's kind of what they're referencing there. Now, some people don't use it on a weekly candle like we're doing here. Sometimes people will use it on a daily candle. And if you're thinking about it in terms of a daily candle, it would be the 50-day moving average and the 200-day moving average. Um, remember, there's five trading days per week. So basically, our 10-week moving average times five is your 50-day moving average and our 40 40-week moving average times five is 200. So there's slight differences between the two approaches, but when we look at it from a weekly perspective, the way that we do here in this video, it gives us a much greater opportunity to look a lot further back in time to kind of see where have we had those crossovers in the past. And as it stands right now, things are pretty bullish. Um, you know, the one concern that we had, I shouldn't say we, that I had uh, a few weeks back was actually the Russell 2000. I was saying if there is going to be a cross, it's likely going to be the Russell 2000 because those lines were getting pinched so tight right there that notice the, the, the orange line and the blue line were getting really close to one another. But with the huge surge that small caps have had in the last couple of weeks, we now have a completely changed picture here where all of a sudden it looks like the Russell 2000 is the one that's garnering strength. And look at what happened there with that orange line. Let me right click and maximize this so you can see it a little bit better. I mean, this orange line was pinching towards the blue line. And now with this huge candle that we've had this week, you can see that the orange line has bent back higher. And so there's now more separation between those two lines, the, the orange line and the blue line. And you can get a feel for that down below on the PPO as well. Remember when that purple line is bent up, it means that the separation between our two moving averages is expanding out. Whereas when that um, purple line was falling here a couple of weeks ago, they were pinching together. So this kind of feels like, you know, a, um, a last minute Hail Mary by the market. And um, right now there's a legit, legitimate chance that the Russell 2000 can kind of kick it into gear again. And there doesn't have to be a uh, death cross at this point. And uh, that'd be a strong sign because that was really the only one that was in jeopardy of doing that. These other ones have so much room between their moving averages that um, a death cross is likely not to is not going to occur anytime soon. But as most of you are aware, here in the United States, we've got a big election coming up uh, within a month, and uh, I have no doubt that there's going to be a lot of activity, a lot of headline risk, a lot of 
you know, um, uh, maybe some some punches thrown in terms of um, verbal sparring between the candidates, and you just never know what's going to happen. So you've got to kind of stay vigilant as a as a trader. But um, right now, I would say things look a little bit better to me when you're looking at this chart compared to when I was looking at it a couple weeks back. All right, let's go ahead and now uh, start doing a bit of 12 grid analysis. Also, one thing before we get to the 12 grids, I was going to point this out when I was talking about the factors before, but I'll, I'll just show you right now too. Um, here on chart uh, 3D, this gives us a sense of six different factors and kind of how they're compared to one another. And I, I did want to kind of specially point out the size factor. And that's the one kind of on the bottom rung in the middle right here. Notice that the low size factor is now up 7% in the last month. That's second only to momentum. And again, it's a little bit of a different story because I think most people, you know, if they casually turn on uh, business television, they know that the work from home stocks and the software and the cloud stocks and all that kind of stuff, e-commerce, that's working right now. That's that's old news, right? We've, we've known about that for many months. I don't think the typical person is realizing right now that low size is nipping at its heels. And, and that's the pr proof in the pudding right there. Uh, low size is making a move. So put some of those small cappers uh, on your radar. Uh, and maybe there's a there's some outsized opportunity there since they have a lot of catch up uh, to do over the years. All right, let's get back on over here to our 12 grids now. Let's start with the asset class 12 grid. And this will be chart 5A uh, for those of you that are premium members following along at home. Now, I, I, I taught a uh, question and answer uh, class today. It lasted about two and a half hours. It was a, it was a great session, had uh, outstanding questions from a lot of different students. One of the questions was, why do you use a um, percentage on our 12 grids here the way that I do? Um, and it's a good question. And some folks may not prefer that, um, and that's okay as well. But the way that I kind of think about it is when we're looking at this 12 grid view like this, um, I want to compare and contrast. That's kind of the idea. Here we're looking at a bunch of asset classes, and I want to know very quickly which asset classes are quote unquote the best and which ones are the worst, at least over a certain period of time. And remember, when we're looking at these 12 grids, the default setting is three months in length. So when you see something like foreign stocks developed up here at the top, you can see that it's up 4.47%. Now that actually looks like a stronger chart than the one just to the left, the S&P 500. Part of the reason it looks like that, um, and, and maybe this would be a better example if I used EEM. They both are good examples, but EEM might be even better to have this conversation with. Notice that EEM, this is the emerging market stocks, they're up 4.6% right now over the last three months. So that's what this percentage label means right over here. Notice that the candle on EEM is nearly at the high. I mean, it was only trading higher back here in late August, but otherwise we're right there. We could break through to new multi-month highs on EEM as soon as tomorrow morning. Then you look at the S&P 500 over here and you're saying, oh, well, it's not even rem remotely close to its old highs and therefore EEM must be the stronger performer. Right? That's what you might be thinking in your head if you didn't have access to those percentage labels. And that is the benefit of the percentage label. Here we can clearly see that over the last three months, the S&P 500 is up nearly 9%, more than doubling what you're seeing right here out of, well, not more than doubling, but right at doubling what you're seeing here for EEM. Even though when you look at it visually, it looks like EEM is stronger. And that it might be true in the last, let's call it couple of weeks, maybe EEM is stronger. But if you are looking back over this full three month period that we're looking at with this chart, um, you actually have um, a stronger performance out of the S&P 500 right there. So anyway, I think most of you are aware of that, but I just wanted to, to kind of sprinkle that in here today since I had received the question on it earlier uh, today. Um, and, and so anyway, uh, that hopefully is uh, something that uh, will benefit some of you. Now, remember, if you don't want to um, look at it from a percentage basis, for those of you that are premium members, if you go into your 12 grid and you, if you want to change it, what you could do is uh, right click on a chart and then go to style and then come up here to settings. And then on this new pop-up, click on the price axis. And then once you do that, you can just uncheck this box over here where it says show price as percentage. So let me just show you what that's like. So I'm gonna uncheck it, hit okay. Now notice over here EEM, it now says that its price is $45 and 
52 cents. It no longer says that it's up 4.6% over the last three months. So for some of you, if you prefer kind of looking at it from a price perspective, you could just change that on all 12 of your charts and then resave over your current grid uh, with that information. But for my purposes, I kind of like seeing it with the percentages. Anyway, back on track here with the analysis now. One thing that was um, quite impressive today was oil prices. Oil prices were up over 2% here today. And importantly, it was enough of a surge there in oil prices where we got up and over a downtrending moving average. That's a, an important sign there. Um, you know, if you're ever going to start creating a bottom, you eventually have to start trading above the moving average. Now, as most of you are aware, it's been difficult for oil and oil related stocks to stay above their moving averages. So um, just because it's there now doesn't guarantee anything about the future, uh, but we want to keep our eye on it because kind of like the small caps, people have basically thrown the oil companies and, and left them for dead. And when everybody gives up wholesale on an entire asset class, it is possible that there is some value opportunity there uh, if there is a brighter future going forward than what market participants are assuming at that moment in time. So let's keep our eye on that story. I'm not gonna make too much of it right now because people have been just way too disappointed with oil giving back gains over and over and over again over the years. But let's at least pay attention to that and um, keep an open mind going forward regarding what could happen with oil and oil related um, assets. I heard kind of an interesting theory the other day that um, oil prices very well might benefit from the presidential election if Joe Biden is um, kind of uh, voted into office and there's a Democratic sweep. Now, I don't know if that's going to be accurate or not, but the theory that I had heard on that is, you know, right now the Republicans kind of have the reputation for drill, baby, drill. And of course, that's great for consumers of oil uh, because there's plentiful amounts of oil and gasoline out there and that keeps prices very low. There's too much supply, not enough demand. Um, so it is possible that while Republicans kind of pride themselves as being you know, the, 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 the side of the aisle for oil, so to speak, uh, strangely enough, because of the regulations that might come with um, Democrats in office, um, you might find that the uh, supply uh, is not as uh, large in the future because of regulations and you know the lack of availability of drilling and you know national parks in Alaska or something along those lines. So uh, I, I thought it was kind of an interesting idea. I don't know if it's going to hold firm or not, but it is something to watch. Obviously, oil is a worldwide market, so it's not just what happens in the United States that depends upon what price the oil has. But I think a lot of people are aware that the United States has kind of been the swing producer in recent years, ever since we've kind of gotten into the whole uh, horizontal fracking business. So let's. Keep our eye on that story because that has been a pretty aggressive move in the last four or five days for oil. Uh, gold, just to the to the left of it here, you'll notice that gold has not really been able to kind of get out of its own way. Now remember, we have a bearish trade on a gold mining stock right now, so this doesn't necessarily disappoint me to see this behavior, but uh, I do like to keep my eye on it because. Uh, gold is kind of a fun space to trade. Uh, whether you're bullish or bearish, doesn't really matter. There's kind of more aggressive activity that takes place with gold and gold mining stocks. And so if you can be on the right side of the trade, you can make money faster than you might be able to with, let's say, I don't know, like consumer staples companies or something like that. So anyway, right now, my, um, my, my philosophy and my, my impression of gold is the same as it has been the last several times I've done this video, which is, Right now, I'm making the assumption that there is pressure in gold and I don't really trust any sort of a move until we get up and over that moving average. Um, right now, we had this triple bottom that I had identified for you guys several times that ultimately became resistance right there and it has not yet breached that resistance area. It plunged below and rebounded right back to it, but it could not get up and through there. So at this moment in time, um, it strikes me that gold is still bearish despite its rise uh, here today. It was up today, but not nearly as much as oil. Uh, oil was up over 2%. Gold was, was just fractionally higher by 0.36%. The US dollar was down today. That could help um, positively impact 
higher commodities prices. Remember, when the US dollar is down, all else being equal, you tend to find commodity prices uh, boosted just a little bit. So I don't think that's a big part of the story, but maybe added a little bit there. But again, kind of my, my, my expectations right now, whether this plays out or not, is US dollar finds a bottom somewhere around this rising 30-day moving average and bounces back higher, in which case a stronger dollar environment also leads to a weaker gold environment. And so the expectation would be a bounce down and away from that falling 30-day moving average there uh, on gold. In terms of uh, interest rate movements, we did see interest rates pull back a little bit today. Interest rates have kind of been um, making their own little move here in the last couple of weeks. So today was a, a rare day of rest for it. And of course, the opposite is true when you're looking at bond prices themselves. We saw bond prices rise uh, just a hair here today uh, in the United States. But notice that there is a big difference in our three different bond charts, long-term US treasuries, foreign bonds, and high yield bonds. Of the three, foreign bonds actually doesn't look half bad from a trending perspective. Yeah, it's more sideways, don't get me wrong, but the fact that it's bouncing up and off of a rising moving average makes it different, right? That's the only one that has that green 30-day moving average right here. US Treasuries, red moving average. High yield bonds, yellow moving average. So there's work to do on those charts, whereas if you're looking for a place that's maintaining value a little bit better in the bond world, Surprisingly enough, it's actually coming from the foreign bond markets at this moment in time. Also, we don't talk about preferred stocks a whole lot, but I, I felt it was important to at least point this move out in the upper right-hand corner. Preferred stocks have been on a heck of a run here for the last five days. We are now up and over that prior double topping formation right there. So we're at new multi-month highs on preferred stocks. Remember, preferred stocks oftentimes uh, are issued by financial institutions. Some of you might have caught the news here today that just after of formally digesting E-Trade, earlier this week, E-Trade just stopped trading on its own because it was fully digested by Morgan Stanley. Well, they're at it again. Morgan Stanley this morning announced that they're going to be uh, buying Eaton Vance in a massive deal that sent Eaton Vance's shares up over 40%. We also saw a massive move out of IBM today off of uh, corporate restructuring, possibility of them sp um, splitting up into two separate companies. And then we also saw some positive uh, dividend announcements out of uh, McDonald's. So today was kind of a day of a lot of different uh, corporate news stories that were affecting things. Anyway, let's take a quick peek here at our sectors. And that will be chart 5C. And as we look at the sectors here, there's only one that's in the red. And boy, is that a surprise. We haven't seen uh, communication stand out um, to the negative side all that often in 2020. If anything, there have been weeks where communications has stood out because of how exceptionally strong it had been. Remember, communications is not just AT&T and Verizon these days, like the old telecom sector was. These days, communications is controlled much more so by Facebook, by Alphabet, by Netflix, and those media companies. So it's kind of more of a close cousin to technology these days. Generally speaking, you'd want to see strength in communication. So right now, this is becoming a little bit of an issue as there's a lot of monopoly uh, challenges in terms of our FANG stocks out there that might be pressuring some of those types of stocks. So right now, communication is the only red chart on the board. Uh, it was up today, so I don't want to discount that. It was up 1.3% on a strong day for the market. But uh, from a longer look back period, you know things have been uh, better, certainly, for communications. Right now, they're kind of stuck in a little bit of a rut. One of the areas that's not stuck in a rut is down below. Utilities just continues to impress day after day after day. In fact, I pointed that out to you guys on Tuesday uh, when we were looking at that chart of um, PCG. We actually have a, a, an ongoing trade in that particular California utility um, right now in this market forecast or market outlook presentation. And uh, it continued to rally today, just like a lot of other utilities have. This has been like a straight up move for utilities. I mean, it's a bit peculiar. Uh, we are now at multi-month highs here on utilities. After just a couple weeks ago, we were like scraping multi-month lows. Uh, that has been a very rapid reversal that's taking place right there. You'll also notice that we've got some good strength here out of the industrials. We also have some good strength in the materials. Now, I did get a question about this as well. On Tuesday, um, I actually did a market outlook 
uh, trade application. Those of you that are premium members, remember we have our Telegram trade service. So you would have received uh, my uh, trade application example, and it was a, a sold put on VMC, uh, which is a um, composites um, uh, mining company, kind of uh, you know makes aggregates for for road and construction and things like that. But anyway. Um, that trade was actually done and facilitated in this account. It's just that uh, by the time I went to record the video, I had noticed that we were under 100 likes and therefore didn't have time to actually discuss it. But I uh, just didn't want that to be confusing to anybody in case it comes up again. There was an actual trade that went through for a short put on VMC. So if you missed that and you're a premium member, make sure you go and check out our Telegram on that as well. So materials have kind of kicked it back into gear here the last few days. So that's good to see. Uh, you can also see that um, industrials are very, very close to hitting their multi-month highs at this moment in time notice that they are probably just actually they're there already boy to the naked eye I wasn't really quite seeing that but actually where we closed right now on XLI up here at eighty dollars and forty one cents that is a new multi-month closing high price so industrials have been leading here recently we've been focusing a lot of our attention in my Monday top-down trend trading class on the industrial sector so we're really happy to see them continuing to motor higher uh, right there uh, as well. But our um, trade application today is actually going to come from the consumer staples space. That's your chart down below here. Notice that recently consumer staples did pop above their moving average and just in the last two days that moving average got colored green. In other words, price is now above a rising moving average. So maybe there's a little bit of a catch up played uh, to be made within the consumer staples. Um, you notice that its chart is only light green, whereas a lot of these others are dark green. They've been leading for a while, but maybe this is an opportunity for the staples to kind of take a, a cue from their low volatility brethren over here with the utilities and make a legitimate move higher. So let's have that conversation real quick on the trade application. Let me pull up chart 3A here, and I'll show you what I had in mind. And again, remember, this trade is already done. Uh, I've already sent out the, the, the Telegram uh, trade alert to all of you that are premium members of Market Scholars, so you would have received this during the trading day uh, here today to give you the benefit, since you're a paying customer of ours, to learn about these trade ideas um, before I announce them to all of our free audience on uh, YouTube later on uh, after the market closes in the evening. So anyway, uh, Brown Foreman, the trade's already done. You can kind of see my levels here if you need specifics on the details of um, you know, the uh, the, the, the price target and the stop losses uh, that's listed for you premium members in the telegram itself but kind of the general idea behind this trade is I was just impressed with the way that Brown Foreman which is the maker of, of Jack Daniels and other uh, uh, spirits and liquors um, they had been in quite the up move and particularly after they announced their earnings they really spiked higher but then they kind of topped out there at $83 and ended up rolling over through the end of September when the rest of the market was somewhat weak as well. What I liked about it was where they stabilized. You know, sometimes when you have a choppy market, stocks will slice straight through their moving averages and then it kind of wrecks the chart. This one I didn't really feel like the chart got wrecked. Yes, it did close below the moving average a few times along the way, but it really never separated itself in a strong way during that time period. And so the last few days, this thing has gathered up some steam here, and you'll notice that it popped above its moving average yesterday, and that moving average turned green, telling us that price is now above a rising moving average, and you'll see that today's follow through allowed one more opportunity for swing traders, which is the background color of the chart went from pink to blue, signifying that the blue near term line is now bullish. Yesterday it was still bearish because it had that, that blue line was rolling over right there, but with today's big move, we now push that blue line up into the upper reversal zone, and now we have a bullish swing trading opportunity. So this is a bullish bounce swing trade where we have a one for one reward risk relationship where we're trying to um, get a uh, win or a price target up in this general vicinity and we're putting our stop loss right down here underneath some of those recent lows. Again, all the details are there for you guys in the Telegram app. All right, thank you so much for checking out our video today. 
Again, for those of you that appreciate these longer videos, uh, if you want me to continue to do that the next time I do the video on Tuesday, go ahead and click like for me there on Twitter. For those of you that appreciate the shortened version of only 15 minutes, then don't click like on Twitter. And uh, whether we're above or below 100 will determine how I will go forward on Tuesday. So uh, thank you for checking out the video. As always, David should be back with you uh, tomorrow. And I'll look forward to seeing you all next week. Take care, best of success with your trades and your investments. Goodbye for now.